Next is Target. Target is huge. The, all of this is huge, right? These are five things you have to know to be able to talk about your company. Target, who is the customer that has this need? Who is the customer that best fits what you bring to the party? The reason I have this continuum of little girl up to kind of very active Florence Henderson-like grandmother is that um, I was judging an entrepreneurial contest for um, DePaul a few years ago. And one of the companies said that their target was females 5 to 50. Hopefully you guys all go, that's a problem. Because it is. It's a huge problem. You can't target someone five, females 5 to 50. The ways that you reach them and the ways that they buy are ve and their needs are very different. First of all, children, children don't buy things. Their parents, their mother is the gatekeeper, right? So you can't target a five-year-old. Even if you target a 20-year-old, I guarantee you, you're gonna find them reading different things and shopping different places than a 50-year-old. So narrowing your target is really important. It is also super scary. This is one place where I get a lot of pushback from the entrepreneurs I work with because everyone's scared take someone out. Everyone is scared to cross the little girl off and put that lady in the center of their bullseye. But this is all about who is your bullseye customer, right? If you could only talk to one person, if you looked at a crowd of people and you could pick out one person to personally sell your product to, who would you pick? Who has the highest chance of success? This is, this is hard. The other thing that makes it a little bit easier is just because you've picked one person to be your bullseye doesn't mean you are disdainful of the people who aren't in your bullseye. It just means that your message is going to be speaking to them. The more specific your message can be to one person, to one need, the more relevant it's going to be. The more people that you try to explain why your product is great or why your service is great, the, the uh, more generic your message is going to be, which means it's going to be the less relevant, the less resonant, for all of them. So this is scary because it means that you're leaving people on the table who might buy. Maybe you've had three of that kind of person who bought, but really if you've had 50 of another kind of person buy, it's, it's making the hard choice to say where do we focus our sales efforts? Everything that I talk to you about today and everything I talk to my clients about is helping you best use your scarce resources because none of you have enough money, enough people, or enough time to do everything you want to do. And for most of you, marketing is probably not even the first thing on your list, right? There's no way that you have enough money, enough time, enough people. Doing the hard work to decide we're going to narrow our target, we're going to really identify the unmet need, that's going to help you be much more focused and efficient about where you spend your money and your time and where you allocate your people. So doing this kind of hard strategic work up front has huge benefits along the way. Um, it, but it does mean making some hard choices. So some examples of bullseye customers that I like from past clients I've worked with include property managers of dwellings with 500 plus units. This was power to switch. They, um, they realized that in order to get the revenue stream they needed, they couldn't go after individual households. It was going to be too hard and take too long and too much money to get you, Mr. Homeowner, and you, Miss you know, Condo Dweller, to buy. They really needed to go after whole buildings in one shot. Um, owners, operators of multi-unit health club chains with 5 to 40 locations, that's sprawling. Um, upper income moms with kids 2 to 12, right? That tells you exactly who they're talking to. Um, people, and that's actually um, Kids Science Lab, which also came out of Booth. Um, people who have friends with cancer, that's Give Forward. If any of you are familiar with them, I'm on their advisory board also. Um, people touched by dystonia, which is a disease, not a country. Um, Owners of businesses with under 1,000 employees. So um, those are all examples of great, relatively narrow targets. One target. You got one target, you got one pile of cash, you got one stack of work. Two targets means you have half the money for each and twice the work. Okay? So for some of you with a two-sided business model, congratulations, that's what you've signed up for. It just is what it is, right? We know that two-sided business models have many advantages. But you are signing up with two targets for half the money 
and twice the work when it comes to marketing. For you guys, you're going to need to do two separate positioning statements because it's a different target with a different need. Right? So you've got to do two positioning statements. You cannot combine them into one. So for y'all, if you need another worksheet, we can give you another worksheet because you're going to need one. Um, if you don't have a two-sided business model, please don't have two targets. I can tell you that even when I worked on Kraft Macaroni and Cheese and had a $20 million budget, I did not have enough money to do two targets well. Okay? And that's because moms with kids, nine to, you know, actually it was, you know, five to 12 with the bullseye being nine-year-olds, we couldn't even begin to spend as much money as we should against that one target because, based on what it would generate for us from a revenue standpoint. So if you don't have a two-sided business model, I hate to see you put yourself in this situation because it's just not efficient for you given everything you have to do with running a business and with trying to get funding. Target, Target is who pays you the money? Who's buying? That's a really easy way to narrow it down. Who is going to hand you cash? And I know that sounds cold and hard, but it's true. Theoretically, all of you are about to be in business to make money, period, end of story, right? If you can't show how you're going to make money, no one is going to want to invest. And this will be a very interesting exercise for you that you'll look back on fondly someday. But if you want to make money and if you want to have a revenue generating enterprise, your target should be the person or entity that is most likely to give you cash or to write you a check. And that's crass, but it's true. Okay? So as you think about who your target should be, also think about who's going to pay you? Who's going to be most willing to pay you? And many times it's because who's got the biggest unmet need? Right? If you're looking at um, an enterprise solution, if you're looking at having to sell into an organization, there are going to be a lot of people who have their hands in things. But who's got the budget? Who ultimately makes the decision? And sometimes you have to do a positioning statement for each target but your primary target should be the person who buys. And part of your marketing challenge is going to be figuring out how to reach the people who have the authority to sign the check.